Hi. A friend asked would I have a look at this and apparently it's a um, physiotherapy machine and it was working but then uh, it suddenly stopped and it looks like it's got a couple of uh, ultrasonic probes here uh, which I've got a frequency on there so I have a probe here he said he's checked the fuses uh, there's a fuse here he said it still doesn't work, so yeah, let's uh, get it out of the box and uh, have a look at it. Alright, so. Looks like uh, the feet have already been removed on it. And it looks like there's a fuse in the back here. Which uh, appears to be intact. And it looks like somebody's been into it as well with the uh, CE label being removed. Right, well, I've just noticed the plug there, which um, doesn't appear to be a fused plug, and one of the terminals is broke. There's uh, the metal contact on there, but uh, <laughs> it doesn't appear to be on there. So I wonder if it's just the uh, I wonder if it's just the plug needs changed on this. Um, I think the first thing to do then is chop this off and uh, replace the plug and see what it does. Right, I shall go find a plug. Right, I'm back and I have a new plug. Some wire cut as on a screwdriver. So let's move this out of the way slightly so I've got space to work. And with it having the CE label on, I'm sure these plugs are illegal because there's not enough grip on them and they're not fused. So, I can't see it being CE approved. So I think that's a, a fake label. Alright, so we'll strip these wires and uh, put them in the right places. And I think I might have to get a different fuse for this plug because uh, it's a 13 amp and this will probably only be a, a couple of amp I would think. Right, so I shall go and find a suitable fuse and be back momentarily. Right, I'm back with the 3 amp fuse because uh, I've just checked the uh, fuse in the power supply here, in the, uh, sorry, in the fuse holder there, and that's a 3 amp, so we'll go with that then. Right, so let's see if it was just that or if it was something else. Or should we take it apart first? Tell you what, we'll have a quick look inside. Might as well, while we're here, just in case there's anything there uh, going to explode. And also, it might be interesting just to see exactly what's in this. And the answer is not a lot. Right, so we've just got a transformer, a bit of a linear power supply there. And looks like there's a big uh, footprint for a dip microcontroller or something there and a, a few buttons. There doesn't really look much in this at all. Got a little bit of a relay there and uh, some transistor on a heat sink, which I guess that's for uh, sending the uh, frequencies out to the probes here. Right, okay, well, that wasn't very exciting. the screws back in and we'll uh, see if it works. I would have thought it would be a little switch mode power supply in this, not a linear one, but... Right, let's uh, plug it in. Right, 
Let's have one of these things work. Let's just plug one of these in and see if it does anything. Yeah, I can feel uh, I can feel a little bit of a vibration on the end of it there. Just on the end of here. I think that's it then. Well, that was a, a, an easy fix. I literally just uh, changing the plug on it. Right, on to something else then. An Alesis or Alesis SR16 drum machine. I purchased this off eBay for spares or repair. I paid around about £26 I think it was, uh, including postage, I'll just bring the listing up so you can have a look. And it was advertised as having no power. So I'm not sure exactly what's wrong with it, but uh, let's see if we can repair it. So it takes 9 volts AC, so I'm not going to run it on the bench power supply. But it did come with the uh, mains adapter, so I think what we'll try first is we'll have a look at this mains adapter and we'll see if uh, it's given any power out. Let's get the test meter out. And we'll go into voltage AC. Let's plug it into an uh, extension lead here. That doesn't make any difference which way the leads go around. Right, so it appears that we're not getting any power out of the power supply. So it looks like the power supply is faulty, but has something internally in the machine caused the power supply to fail, such as one of the bridge rectifiers or diodes inside, or has the power supply just failed? So I think what we'll do, we'll take the machine apart and we'll check the diodes and bridge rectifiers and stuff inside. So let's have a look at the back of it. So this was made in 1990. And it looks like we have three screws along the bottom. There's a couple of screws here. I'm not sure if there's any underneath that uh, sticky part here. It actually feels like there's one possibly under that label as well. So I think I'll remove these couple of uh, sticky strip things if I can. So it doesn't look like anybody's been into this, so that's good news. So you can just put those to one side, these bits of tape. And I'll see if I can gently lift part of this label up. So we've got five screws on the back. Let's grab a screwdriver. Right, let's see if uh, that lets it in. <coughs> Take that knob off just in case. I'm not sure whether that comes off with the top, but it may not. Cable there. Oh, look, this looks interesting. It's all uh, through hole components, and it looks like there's a backup battery. And just here as well, I'll we'll zoom down a bit and have a look. I'm just going to unplug this connector a second if I can. Notice so we've got three piezo buzzers there. Now I wonder if those are being used as 
piezo buzzers or whether they're being used so if you tap the top there it may uh, send a signal out because uh, some of the electronic drum kits actually use these as sensors to detect when the drums are being hit. Right, we'll get the top out of the way. Right, so it looks like the power comes in here. It looks like we've got a couple of diodes there, which are probably uh, rectifier diodes, I would think. And a couple of capacitors for smoother. And it looks like we've got a 7805 voltage regulator here to uh, supply the 5 volts to the logic chips. So the pinout, if I remember right, is power in, ground and power out. So I we'll check these diodes first. I'll just zoom out a bit and bring them in shot. And try and get the bit there. So it has a glare on it there. Let's uh, just check these. So that looks okay. And that looks okay. I think I'll put it on diode checking. We should, uh, should get about 0.5. And we shouldn't get anything the other way. We may do if it reads through with our components, but so that seems so the rectifier diode seem alright. Let's check the input and output just to see what resistance we've got there. So that looks okay. I think that looks okay. Well, it looks okay up to now. I wonder if there's any power in this backup battery. I mean, that's not going to affect it switching on. But while we're in here, we might as well just see what voltage is in this uh, backup battery just in case that needs replaced. Looks like it's held in with these jack plugs here. And we'll probably clean this potentiometer for the volume as well while we're on. Right, so the backup battery is on these connections here. It's actually uh, not so bad. 2.9 volts. Well, that's held up quite well if it's from 1990. Right, I think we'll crack this power supply open and see if we can see what's gone in that. See if it's got an internal fuse perhaps or a thermal fuse that's gone. Let's put this to one side for a second. And there's no obvious signs of any way to get into this. It looks like it's been plastic welded around the outside. Now I have had some success in getting into these before by just tapping it around the edge quite hard with a, a screwdriver. So I'll give that a go and then uh, hopefully we can get into it. A few moments later. So after a bit of tapping with the uh, back of the uh, handle of the screwdriver, I've managed to get into it. And I can't see any internal fuses. There's normally a thermal fuse that's on the primary winding. But it's sometimes buried within the, uh, the actual middle of the transformer. Right, let's uh, measure the primary and that's open circuit. Let's check the secondary. And we've got resistance on the secondary but nothing on the primary so it looks like the thermal fuse has gone in the transformer. Let's just check this cable as well. A 
fall on the cable as well maybe. Don't seem to be getting very good readings on the cable either. So it could be that there's a fault on the cable. I don't know, I'm getting a reading there now, but when I jiggle it around, so it could be a fault on the cable as well as a fault on the uh, transformer. Right, I'll see if I can find something and that's going to give us a 9 volt AC. Like I said I can't use the bench power supply because that only gives out DC, so right, I'll be back. And I'm back. So I've been searching around for quite a while for a power adapter that would give out 9 volts AC because most of the adapters I've got are uh, DC but I remember I had an old Commodore 64 power supply I've actually got the uh, Commodore 64 as well so that might feature in a future repair video and that gives out 9 volt AC on these two pins here so I've put a bit heat shrink and just slid it over the pins with the wire poked in just on the end pins there so hopefully that'll do and I found a couple of old computer speakers which I've rigged up with a adapter that I've just had to cobble together there because I didn't have anything that had a quarter inch jack outputs so let's see what it does when we power it on now that looks promising yeah we seem to have uh, stuff a little on the display and I can see a little tempo thing flicker in there Let's uh, hit play and see what it does. Actually, we need some volume on there, don't we? It seems like the volume control is a bit scratchy. I'll tell you what, I've got some switch cleaner, a contact cleaner, so we'll do a squirt of that. I just haven't got it back together as yet. That's better. Try a different pattern or something. Right, so it looks like it was just the power supply on this then. I'll just stop that there. So nothing really much else to see on this one. Just a fairly simple repair. Just uh, requires a new power supply. So I was actually hoping this was going to be a little bit more involved than just a power supply but that's the problem when you buy these things from EB you never know what the fault's actually going to be. Right, I think on to the next one then. A Bosch Reciprocating Saw. Now this belongs to the organiser of our local repair cafe and he asked us uh, could I bring it home and have a look at it. And it just seems completely dead. Um, it's got a battery installed here so I'll just check that the battery's okay. Turn the battery off. Right. Let me get her out and I'll put on the volts DC. And right, so we've got 20 volts in there and it's an 18 volt battery, so I would say that's fully charged. So it's not the battery. Alright, how does this come apart then? It looks like we've got a number of Phillips screws around the outside there, so I think we'll start by removing those. Alright, so hopefully that's all the screws out of it. And we're in. 
So, looks like we've got a brushed mortar here, along with the gearbox, which uh, obviously gives the backward and forward motion. And it looks like we've got an on-off switch with a speed controller, and we've got a small circuit board in the bottom. Which what appears to look like a possibly a couple of MOSFETs. Uh, I think we'll zoom down a bit so we'll get a better view. Right. I don't think we've got some kind of I don't know whether that'll be either a current sensing or some kind of uh safety type of resistor there. Which is, might be acting as like a fuse. Looks like we've got a couple of MOSFETs there. Looks like a small microcontroller and a power light. We've got a few discrete transistors along the bottom there. It could be MOSFETs maybe. That looks like some kind of uh, voltage regulator perhaps. And apart from that, it doesn't seem a great deal on it. Now, I've noticed there's an LED there, but I didn't notice any LEDs lighting up when we uh, powered it up. So, let's make sure we get this in the right way. Okay. Right, well, we've got some lights there. Let me press that. I'll just zoom out the fraction. Yeah, so there's a work, like a an LED, like a torch one there. And there's a battery indicator light. Right, let's see if we get any power to this motor. Because it could be the motor that's gone. Uh, require a bit more disassembly to get this uh, out. Alright, there's a switch on that side for the gearbox. Let's see if we can see where those wires come to here. Right, let's see if we've got any power on these when we press this uh, button. Yeah, I think we're getting 20 volts there by the look. Actually, 9 volts there. Yeah, 20 volts. So that looks like it's um, regulating the power there. If I take it off a little bit, we're getting 6 volts. If I press the switch in a bit more, it slowly goes up. So that must be for the speed control. So I would say the electronics seem to be working okay. And I'd suggest it's a problem with the motor. And I don't know if we've got some fins missing off the motor there, because that doesn't seem right. I would have thought we should have a, uh, a steady supply of fins going around there for cooling, not a sort of an odd arrangement like that. I think the motor's gone. Let's see if we can get this motor out. <coughs> Let's disconnect this board for now. That's another Phillips. Looks like the mortar's held in with two screws on the top here. So let's see if we can get those out. And that gives us access to the motor. So, and the good news is, that seems like a fairly standard motor. That looks like a 775S. 
And it looks like it was manufactured in 2014 from the uh, date on there. So I think we might be able to get one of these motors fairly easily because I'm sure I've seen these on Ally Express. Yeah, that uh, definitely doesn't seem right. It should definitely have fans all the way around. I definitely have sort of blades all the way around, should I say. It. Even the uh, bearings in there sound a bit uh, not the best. So I've got a feeling that's going to be open circuit. Let's just uh, have a look. Let's go on to ohms. I must measure this. And we should have a fairly low resistance on there. In the matter of ohms I would think. And we actually seem to at the moment. It could be that uh, one of the coils is burnt out. Let's try and get these wires on here. Yeah, so we've got no reading there now. We did initially, but... So I think the best course... Oh, there we go. Yeah, so I think it's intermittent. Yeah, we've got readings all over the place there. I think the best course of this is a replacement motor. There's probably been iron filings getting into it as well because I see a lot of iron filings around here. So one of those could have shorted out one of the windings on the uh, commutator. Right, I think uh, I'll order a new motor for this and then we'll come back to it. The new motor that I ordered has just arrived. It's taken about a month for this to come from uh, China. And it looks very similar, but one thing I have noticed is the uh, the shaft at the end, uh, the uh, motor drive shaft is slightly longer than the original, so I might have to grind that down slightly. But apart from that, I think it uh, you know it's pretty much the uh, pretty much the same dimensions. So what I need to do now is uh, take this over to the workshop probably place something underneath this cog and uh, press uh, this uh, shaft down with a punch or something or hit that uh, shaft with a punch remove this cog and fit it onto this motor so uh, yeah I think we'll take it over the workshop and do that So that's the cog fitted to the new motor, so it'll just be a matter of uh, soldering the wires back on now and fitting it back into the case and then reassembling it. So I'm just going to tin these uh, contacts first. So that's it all back together, let's see if it works.
Right, I think that'll do for that one then. Another nice little fix on that one. Well, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more like it, please subscribe. Any comments or questions, please leave it in the comments section below. And as always, have a great day. Thanks for watching.